Okay, so for this Battle Sarah setup guide, I'm going to get you up and running with PS1, PlayStation 1, or PSX, however you want to call it. I'm going to show you some video settings and how you're going to get the best performance and, of course, the best look for your old PS1 collection. So check this video out. <laughs> Okay, if you like what you see in today's video, be sure to check out my other PlayStation Batacera setup guides, and I've got a couple of other ones too in my Batacera playlist. So, if you like what you see in today's video, just hit notifications for me, and also hit subscribe. It really helps out my channel a lot, and it also gets you the content as I upload it. So, let's get on with this. We're looking at PS1, uh, PSX, PlayStation 1, whatever you want to call it, um, and we're looking to get this up and running for you. So, first thing I suggest you do, like I do in all my Batacera guides. So if we just go into the main menu, I'm pressing start on my PS3 controller for this. Uh, we're just going to go down one to game settings and right at the bottom you're going to find missing BIOS check. Uh, what we're going to do is just work up from the bottom here and I tend to use my cursor up or my up key on my keyboard. It seems to go much quicker than my controller does. So what we're looking for is uh, PSX and here we go. So we have got seven BIOS files for this. Now just let me make you aware that it's not necessary on PS1 to have BIOS files, uh, but they certainly do give you a better performance with certain BIOS files. So this is everything you need just here to give you that extra boost in performance and I highly recommend it. So just make a mental note or take a screenshot of this if you wish. So anyway, uh, once we've Establish which BIOS files we need or you don't need. Uh, let's go into F1 and let's go into start dragging and dropping. So what I've done is connected my external USB drive and I've got my PSX BIOS files here and I'm going to just highlight all these by left clicking and highlighting everything. If I just right click and copy, now I'm going to send these into my BIOS folder in Batacera. So what I'm going to do is literally just right click on here and just paste. They don't need to be in a separate folder. They're good as they are just here. And I've only got a few PS1 games in my collection. And I've got a 007 game here. This is Tomorrow Never Dies. Uh, personally, I think that was Pierce Brosnan's uh, last best film of his era. But anyways, what I'm going to do is also copy this. And I'm going to copy this one into my Batacera. ROMs folder and we're just going to find PSX and here we go. So I'm going to open this folder and just paste my Tomorrow Never Dies game in here and it's a fantastic game. Uh, you know there's only a couple, maybe a few at best, uh, decent James Bond games out there. Uh, this is one of them I think. I've always liked this one from uh, you know even back in the day. It's a really good shooter. Right so we've got all this set up. Now if we go to applications uh, we have got a duck station standalone emulator included with the Batacera distribution, but we don't need to do that because uh, Batacera comes with a RetroArch core. So let me show you what I'm saying. So if we go to file here and we just close this down, what I'm going to do next is just main menu, game settings and update game lists, and that's going to refresh everything. And here we go. Here is PlayStation, and I'm going to just go into that, and here is our game. And I'm going to, of course, get some artwork for this. So, Scraper and Scrape Now. Now, if you're new to Batacera and you're wondering how to set this up, I do have a setup guide, uh, well, pretty much a comprehensive setup guide, to get you up and running from scratch with Batacera. So, be sure to check that out if you're not sure what I'm doing here. So, once this is finished scraping, what we're going to do next is game settings, update game lists, and yes. What we're going to do before booting this one up, if I just press select on my controller to go to view options, advanced system options, and un under emulator, we've got Duck Station just here, that's a standalone and it's superb. But the one I'm focusing on is the RetroWatch Core, which is Libretro Swan Station, which is pretty much just as good as Duck Station. So I'm going to select this one and I'm going to boot it up with this RetroArch core. So here we go, we're booting straight in and as you can see I've got decorations on the side and I'm going to show you how to disable these in a minute but let's just test out how this game looks with default settings. Now if you can see this, just make note of the text on there, what you've just seen. It's very pixelated and it don't look too clever. And like I said at the start of this video, we're going to actually get this looking amazing. 
Okay, so just take note of the pixelation going on here and how old this looks from the trees and the backgrounds to the snow on the floor. Just take a look at this and I'm going to show you in a minute how we can improve this. Okay, so let's start adjusting the video settings and get you the best performance possible. So by doing this, what I'm going to do is just go into view options again, like we did a minute ago to change the emulator to the retro retro arch core. Go to advanced system options, and to do this, just make sure that your emulator is under the one I was just using, which is of course the retro Swan Station. So first of all, we're going to look at video mode. So video mode by standard, uh, if you leave this to auto, it's going to pick up your screen output like mine's still right now, which is 1080p. So leave that to auto for any other reasons. Then just scroll through the different modes here and just select the one appropriate for the screen you're using. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is go to games aspect ratio, and I'm going to turn this into a widescreen image. Now, what I'm going to do next with this is, just a minute ago, we had decorations on the side, uh, like I pointed out, the PlayStation on the side. So, what we're going to do, because we're now switching over to 16 by 9 ratio, uh, if we leave the decorations on, it's going to take away a lot of our image. So, we need to disable this by going into de decoration set and going to none. And what I'm going to do next is just go up one to game rendering and shaders. And this is where we can really boost up our game. So if we go to shader set, the one I recommend is enhanced. I think it's a really nice shader to be using on these old games. Another really important one to make these old PS1 games look really good is smooth games by linear filtering. So I'm going to turn this one to on. You can leave it to auto, but let's just turn this on for now. Interscaling pixel perfect. I'm also going to put on on this one. And if we just go down a little bit, I'm going to make a note of this. Sometimes uh, some PlayStation games won't boot up. So this is likely down to a driver, what you're using. So to change drivers from, say, OpenGL to DirectX to Vulkan, we're just going to go to Graphics API. And from Auto, it's normally running the OpenGL driver. On rare occasions, it might need something like Vulkan. So if that's your case, just go to Vulkan and select that. But like I say, majority of games do run fine with OpenGL. What we're going to do next is go down to render and resolution. And this is the part where we can really make these games look awesome. So obviously, if you've got the hardware to support it, like I said in the beginnings of this video, then you can go up to around four to five times. I do find anything after five times uh, starts playing up with your games uh, lag. Some games don't boot and you'll get weird artifacts in your gameplay too. So for this, I'm going to just go up to four times, and you're going to see in a minute what type of difference this is going to make. Uh, next up, we've got texture filtering, and I'm going to put this one onto bilinear, which is my favorite texture filtering option. It makes the games look really good, and it also adds a bit of blur to that pixelation in PS1 games. Now, one down again, we got widescreen hack. It does say glitchy, and it doesn't work of all games. It might cause some problems. But you can feel free to experiment with this one, uh, which will give us a good widescreen. So just turn that one to on for now. And if we go right to the bottom, we also got anti-aliasing. So again, if you can support this with your hardware, then by all means, test this out. Sometimes these systems are a case of trial and error. But, you know, even by bumping this up to, say, four times or eight times, MSAA, it's going to be a massive improvement over how these games originally looked. So for this, I'm going to just say go to two times and it's going to make a massive improvement anyway. So let's just back out of here and let's open up this game again with these video settings now applied. And here we go, I can see by the text already that there's less pixelation, there's a lot less noise around the text for a start. Things seem a little bit more smoothed out on this, and maybe it doesn't come across too well through this video camera, but try this out, it really looks good. Even this text just here, everything's slightly blurred, everything looks a little bit more rounded rather than squared on the sides of the text.
So the widescreen hack seems to be working fine with this one. And it looks good. Uh, the trees in the background, the snow on the floor, everything is perfect. Nothing looks so pixelated anymore with these settings applied. So that's it for my PSX uh, PlayStation 1 setup guide for Batacera today. Uh, this is the last in my PlayStation Batacera series. So I've covered PS1 now, PS2 and PS3 like I said. So I am going to be uploading more Batacera setups. I've done a handful at this point but I'm going to do a lot. If you've not checked out my other front end setup guides, I've done lots on Retro Bat and I've still got a lot more to do on that one. I also cover a launch box occasionally. So if you like this video, like I say, hit notifications so you don't miss out on upcoming setup guides for Batacera. I've got so much more to come. So until next time, stay retro.